Hi, my name is Sebastian, and this is a tutorial for the school bus router. The code can be found in my GitHub um, with the repo name school bus router. So let's begin. Let's split this tutorial into four separate sections. For the first part, we're going to understand what is her problem. For the second part, we're going to describe how we can solve this problem. Afterwards, we're going to look at the code for the project. And lastly, we're going to perform a hands-on tutorial for modifying this code. Let's begin with what is our problem. The problem we're trying to solve is how to deliver students to their homes. For that, we have to pretend we're the owners of the school. We're going to call the school a depot, which is our start and, and location. Our buses are simply called vehicle, and we have to drop off students at certain stops. Our students are going to be called riders, and more than one rider can get off at a single stop. At the end of the last stop, the vehicle has to return to the depot, but um, some buses may have to spend the night at a different location, say a parking lot at the downtown of a city. So we may have a secondary depot, which is our parking lot. And for these buses, instead of going back to the school after their last drop off, they have to spend the night at a separate depot. So we have to consider these four things for a problem. The first is that we have limited seats in each bus. The second, we have multiple riders that may get off at a single stop. We also have variable end locations since the buses can spend the night at either the school or the parking lot. And our objective is to minimize route time. So let's see how we can solve this problem. Now it's time to see what is the how for a problem. To solve our problem, we have a router, and our router receives riders, vehicles, and depots as an input, and it outputs our set of routes. Each route is a collection of stops, and it has a vehicle assigned to it. In a router, we have two modules, which is our problem builder and our model builder. And for our problem builder, we also have an estimator module. We are talking about having two data structures. One is a problem and the other is a model. The problem is our business problem. So think about it as having to know what are stops, um, how long it takes to go from each stop to the other, which is represented by estimations and so on. Whereas our model is our mathematical problem. So the model, the model takes the business problem and translates it to uh, math notation. So our riders, vehicles, and depots enter our problem builder where we build the starts and ends for our vehicles. We build the stops from the different rider locations and we actually build the problem while using the estimator to build paths we, which are the different combinations between stops and we estimate those paths to know how long it's going to take uh, for us to travel between stops. After we have our problem, this problem goes to our model builder and our model builder applies constraints such as the capacity constraint that we mentioned. We set the objective function, which is to minimize our route time. And we also set some search parameters for our heuristic solution. And after, we have our model, we solve this model to finally obtain our routes. Now that we know what our problem is and how we're going to solve it, let's take a closer look at the code that solves the routing problem. The project is written in Python. And before jumping into the code, first, let's make sure that unit tests run correctly. We have also an adequate amount of coverage and our style is compliant with Python uh, style guides. So let's fire up a new terminal and let's generate a coverage report while unit testing. 
And we have 29 unit tests that run OK. We only have unit tests since this is an isolated project and we don't have any integration testing. Now let's take a look at that coverage report. We have a 99% coverage for our code, which is pretty decent. And lastly, let's take a look at our code linting. So we can see we're good to go. This project runs on the main.py file. So first, let's take a look at how to run that file. And we can see that we have some command line interface arguments which is an input deer and an output deer. So the input deer is going to tell us uh, what is the directory where all our inputs are. And the output deer is the desired directory where we want to dump our output, which in, in this case is our routes. We have an input directory already, which contains our depots.json. Each depot has the name and a let long. We have our writers and each writer has an ID and also a location given by light long. We have some vehicles and these vehicles have uh, a capacity, a start and end location, and also a vehicle ID. And we also have some params basically for running the project. And we're going to use this input um, directory. So let's type main.py and our input deer is just going to be input and our output deer we want it to be output so let's run the project we can see that we successfully uh, run the project and if we take a look actually at our directory we can see that we now have in the output deer and uh, a routes.json and for this routes.json we have two routes one for each vehicle so for, let's take a look at the magic school bus and for the magic school bus we start at the school which of course uh, no riders are dropped off afterwards at this location we're dropping off Forrest Gump and Jenny Curran and then um, Baba Blue, Lieutenant Dan, and then we go back to the school. For Thomas the bus engine, it's interesting that we start at the school but end at the parking lot because that's how it was defined in our inputs. And now that it is clear how to run our project, let's take a closer look at our code. As I mentioned, we have a main.py file. And in this main.py, we have all the command line interface parsing. And this is how we um, execute our method. So first we obtain our, our inputs. Then we define the modules that we saw earlier. So our estimator, our problem builder, uh, our model builder, and lastly, our router. And then we obtain our routes with the dot route method. Lastly, we write our routes to the output deer. So let's take um, a closer look to each of these modules. The router module lives in our router.py file. In here, we have a router that needs a problem builder and an optimization model builder. And it's fairly simple what the router does. First, it builds the problem, then it builds the model, then um, we solve the model to obtain the solution, and lastly, we, we parse the solution to obtain our routes. Our problem and problem builder live in the problem deer. So we have a problem class, which has all our necessary attributes, and we, ha we have a problem builder which needs an estimator to be able to um, estimate paths. And for the build method, we are defining starts and ends for our vehicles based on the depots. We are building stops from the riders' locations, and we are performing estimations 
based on the estimator that we want to use. Lastly, we return the problem. In the estimator steer, we can have all different sorts of estimators. Maybe we want to use Google Maps. Maybe we want to use here maps. In this case, we have a simple linear estimator in which we're using a Haversine distance divided by a default velocity. And basically what you want from the estimator is an estimate method where you're passing stops and you're returning the, the, the estimations represented by a float. This linear estimator belongs to a father estimator class. And this estimator class also has a method for building paths um, from the number of stops that are defined earlier. Our optimization model files live in the optimization model directory. In here, we have an optimization model, which is a class that holds the necessary attributes. This class um, it has the solve method where the solution is obtained and also translated or processed, if you will. And for this Python project, we are using actually our tools, which is an excellent open source library for um, operations research related subjects. And our optimization model builder to be able to build that optimization model needs some constraints. In this case, we're only having a capacity constraint. And when we build the model, we have a manager that helps us translate our business problem to our mathematical model. We have a solver and we have some search parameters. After we define these three things, we apply some constraints, in this case, our capacity constraint, and we also set the objective function. As I mentioned earlier, our optimization model builder needs some constraints. So our constraints live here and we have a capacity constraint. That capacity constraint, what we're trying to say is that the demand at a certain stop has to be um, limited by the vehicle capacities. And that's the only um, mathematical constraint that we have in this problem. Lastly, we have our model steer, which holds all our entity classes. So we have a depot, location, rider, vehicle, and so on. We also have our tests directory for unit testing, and we have some um, random utils for basically um, things like parsing hours to seconds and, and so on. And now, that we have taken a closer look at the code, we can go ahead and do something more fun with it. Okay, so now it's time for our last part, which is a hands-on tutorial on how to modify this code. Now that we have reviewed the code, we can play around with some of the inputs and see how the project behaves. Let's say, for example, that for our vehicles, Thomas the bus engine is not going to end at the parking lot, but rather go back to the school. We're using the same command as before. So we're going to generate our routes. We successfully wrote two routes and let's take a look at them. So now Thomas the bus engine starts at the school, ends at the school, and of course the magic school bus also begins at the school and, and ends at the school. What if, for example, we had another vehicle? Let's say um, we can call it maybe funny bus. And let's say that this vehicle ends at the parking lot, for example. When we run this, we actually wrote three routes. So if we take a look at them, we can see that now the Magic School Bus has fewer stops. Oh, or actually no stops because it just remains at the school. Uh, Thomas the Bus Engine um, has one, two, three stops 
and then the funny bus actually has the other um, stops. But what if we modify their capacities? Maybe we have only capacity for two students. So maybe we're talking about cars instead of buses. If we run this, so now we have to actually distribute the students between the, the vehicle so that um, we see that we have um, stops in all of them. So the Magic School Bus drops Forrest and Jenny, Thomas drops Lieutenant Dan and Baba Blue, and the Funny Bus drops off the veteran at the War Rally and the nurse at Park Bench. So we can um, keep doing all sorts of fun stuff with this project because it's fairly flexible for different needs and different schools that actually want to manage their own fleet. And with that being said, uh, we end this tutorial and I thank you very much for watching. Uh, once again, you can check the code at my GitHub, at the repo school bus router. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again in the next time.